Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Richard Metal Fan Interviews. This is episode number 38. And today's guest, I am honored to talk to the one and only Simon Hestenes, who you probably best know him as ICS Vortex. Yeah, he is the front man and bassist for the band Borknagar. He was he's also plays in Arcturus, and he was also in a, a little band called Dimubor Year for a little bit. So we're going to be talking about him getting into metal, what made him want to be a vocalist and play bass, as well as like his musical journey from where he started to now. So without further ado, let's go talk to ICS Vortex. So what's up, guys? I am Ooh. here with uh, Simon Hestenes, a.k.a. ICS Vortex from Borknagar, Arcturus, and plethora of other bands. So how are you doing today, man? Hey, all good, man. How so yeah, you? doing really well. So basically this format is we're just going to go through your catalog as well as like your musical journey from where you started to now. But let's just dive right back into the very beginning. What were the first bands that got you into metal? What made you want to be a vocalist and also slap at the bass? <laughs> oh, slap at the bass. Uh, I never wanted to slap the bass. Slap the bass is just something I did because uh, the bass player of uh, Burkhardt quit two weeks before we went out on tour and somebody had to do it. So I said, okay, I can do it. All right. So that was that. Uh, but singing, I don't know. Uh, it started with Kiss, uh, I guess, because when, <clears throat> when young ones in Norway, uh, back in the day, uh, we had candy bags and they had Kiss cards in them. And so even before I heard, ever heard Kiss, I knew that, oh, they look like, yeah. Kizimus looks like Satan. And um, I grew up in a Christian family, so of course it was instant connection. And yeah, that's what I wanted. So I guess that's how it started. Uh, slap of the bass is just, um, I don't know. I, mean, it's, I enjoy playing guitar more, but I don't know. It's a better. You can make right. me it. Slap with the bass, I guess. <laughs> that, that's great, man. So, uh, that's a weird, weird answer. Sorry, sorry, you were saying I need to get a cigarette. All right, uh, so excuse me, I need a cigarette. All right, you can add this, I'm sure. That's all good. Can't find my cigarettes. This is this is not cool. Sorry if I'm taking up your time here. No, 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 you're you're fine. Uh, so so moving on on people like obviously know you from Borknagar, Arcturus, Dimuburg Gear, but what were you like your be pre band bands pre like Borknagar before you joined the band? And I'm pretty sure I'd love to hear uh, like the in depth of, of that. Ooh, the in depth version. I don't know. I just went through some demos. Uh <laughs> with a band called Penthouse Pets. I was the drummer. Oh, and wow. It's super fucking horrible. I was, I don't know, 14, 15. And these guys were, I don't know, 18, 19. They had cars. And uh, it was a horrible, horrible glam band. <laughs> oh, wow. And it's... Uh, it's it's hilarious. Uh, I mean, the the vocalist he had. Uh, I mean, I grew up in uh, the Longhus, and uh, which is the same place as the Mayhem Boys, which is kind of nice. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll get back to that later. Uh, I don't know. It's the the, uh, the vocalist he couldn't sing, but he had uh, Longhus finest looking ass when he was moving around in his Levi's five oh one. That is fucking awesome. He had a nice, good-looking piece of ass, and uh, I couldn't sing for shit. Uh, and so, but I played the drums uh, because uh, this guy that we rehearsed at, the guitar player, he had, uh, uh, helped. I don't know. That was must have been Mannheim out with some symbols when they recorded Death Crash. So for doing this gig, I said I wanted the, and yeah, he got, he, for, yeah, for lending him uh, the symbols, he received number 35 of the Death Crush uh, album. And so I said, okay, I can do this gig if, um, if I get that copy. 
and so I did. And uh, yeah, well, that was later in the way. Uh, and so it was pretty sweet. Uh, so that was my Pentas Pets stories. Uh, we did one demo and it totally sucks balls. It's not on YouTube, so don't even try. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Dully <laughs> noted. Thing. Yeah. And you know, uh, after that, it was uh, Lamented Souls, which some some people might know. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I know you did like two demos. Yeah, and it's, it's, it, it all, uh, you know, uh, accumulated in this Origin of Mysteries uh, CD and I don't know, vinyl thingy. Uh, so everything's there and uh, it will be super sweet to to take it up again. Uh, I just talked to uh, Olav uh, about it. Uh, which he was the, he's the bass player. I don't know that he and Uli Argen is jamming uh, these days. So, uh, so and I've talked to Mistis. Mistis wants to, um, Mistis wants to join Lamented Souls. Oh, this is very unofficial. Oh, Unoffic Mistis. <laughs> unofficial. They're, they're the old keyboard uh, player for Dimu. Is, yes, that's true. Oh my! Wow, that's wow. awesome. Uh, so, just, well, it's. <laughs> Knowing Lamented Souls, it's probably never going to happen, but at least yeah. we're talking about it. So I have some, uh, some good songs that would, that would fit. Uh, yeah, fingers crossed. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would, that would be awesome, actually. Right. Uh, I don't know if you have, a, I, I know that the drummer wants to, wants to join. I just talked to, uh, with him loosely. I'm not sure if he's uh, up to it, but I don't know, we, we did it as a three piece before he joined. So. Or maybe, or, or something else, but you know, it would be nice to jump with that uh, Lamented Souls again because uh, I miss the boys and I miss the music. All right, and then then you joined up with a Bort Nagar in 97. How'd you end up hooking up with the guys? Uh, yeah, we I had I was briefly in our tours before even that, uh, that must have been in yeah, 96 maybe, and and the boons, and actually. We did some uh, some concerts. Could that have been ninety six or something? That was early. My first uh, show. Yeah, I was two World years was... old. <laughs> oh. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I wasn't much older. I feels like it now in retrospect. And all yeah. I have was, sorry uh, to make you feel old, dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's that's quite all right. I um, I'm happy with my age. That's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, now it's yeah. So a couple of shows with the baboons and that, and after a total a week old fucking yeah, we ruined it for ourselves. It just didn't sound. We were just so inexperienced, and I mean we were so high hopes, and everything went just yeah to shit. Which is a nice long story, but whatever. That was uh, that was that was that it was uh, Baboons and uh, and Arturus and then Borik Nagar and um, and yeah I guess ninety seven when I moved to Bergen. All right. Now, when you joined Bork Nagar, did you listen to like the self titled and the olden do domain and be like, this is what I need to do, or did like Oyston and the rest of the boys wanted you to bring like your own mix to the band? Uh, ooh, uh, I've I've listened to uh, to to the olden domain and. Uh, you know, me and, uh, and Chris were good friends uh, back then, still are. So, and uh, I mean, he does his thing, and I, I do my thing. It's it's always been like that. Yeah, uh, we influence each other, I guess. I did influence him with the Chaos Path, and because that was the start of La Masquerade, and uh, I mean, he uh, definitely inspired me with uh, some of his, uh, his grim vocal uh, styles, and um, so yeah. All right, and then no, it, I think yeah. I do. I, I get melody lines instantly in uh, in my head, and I follow them always, and, uh, and and that's just the way it is. All right, and then you in '98 you dropped your first album with Borknagar, the Archaic Course. What was that whole writing and recording process like? That was fun uh, because. Uh, uh, we did it as a band, old school style, in the rehearsing room uh, a lot. I mean, it's, it was uh, mostly it's Einstein's uh, material, of course, but we rehearsed all the songs. We knew 
everybody knew exactly what to do when we went into the studio in um, in Woodhouse in uh, in yeah, that was ninety seven probably. So um, it was all well rehearsed and uh, yeah, well thought out. It was uh, yeah, like that. No uh, studio magic, just well a little bit of that too, of course, because sometimes you can't help it. But it was just uh, no good times. We mm -hmm. we we did it as a unit. So that was really cool. I missed that. Okay. And then in 99, you uh, joined a Dimu Borgir. How did you end up hooking up with the Dimu guys? Uh, I think they heard the Lamented Souls, some Lamented Souls stuff. And uh, I was just supposed to do, uh, I guess, the insight on the catharsis. Uh, uh, I think I went straight from the studio in, in Woodhouse to to the boys in Sweden. They, they were recording with Petter Tekeren uh, in the Abyss Studios, and we did everything one night. I haven't hadn't heard the songs before, and we just yeah did all the vocals in one night. Yeah, because you did like session work for Spiritual Black Dimensions. Yeah, sorry, this is what I'm thinking about. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, and I hadn't really met the guys a lot before this, and uh, yeah, just it was um, really inspiring. It was an inspiring moment for for us all. I think with just being there in Abyss, uh, I mean, with that, uh, those songs are uh, yeah, still strong today. I mean, the whole album is really fucking good, all right? Um, in my opinion. Yeah. So moving on to, to the new deck, New Millennium 2000, we got the Quintessence by Bort Nagar. What was that like going from Archaic Course to Quintessence? Uh, well, first we had more time in the studio, I think. And we, well, as we did, in, we lived in Germany from, maybe it was about, I can't remember. Uh, Archaic Course maybe was uh, two, three weeks. I think we had four weeks of the whole Quintessence thing. So we just lived there in uh, in Petr Tekeren's, uh, you know, old mental asylum, um, which it is. And uh, it's during the middle of the, I can't remember. So winter probably was. Anyway, it was, it was um, yeah, just a magical experience getting it, uh, yeah, getting it all together. Um, yeah, yeah, I remember uh, playing the guitar for Colossus and uh, it was, um, it was really fun. <laughs> yeah, yes, it was. All right, and it was also around that time you left Borknagar. Gar, I think it was like after no, the album I came out. See, no, no, no. Uh, what happened was we. I think we were supposed to go out on tour uh, with uh, Borknagar, and then Dima Borigir was recording an album. Yeah, puritanical. Yeah, yeah, probably. So this crashed, and for me, it's more important. And I told this then, it's more important for me to to do an album than to go on a on a tour. And of course, this didn't sit well with the, the boys in Borknagar, and I can totally understand this. And I mean, if it was, if it was, if it had, if it had been today, I mean, we would have figured it out. But yeah. back in the day, things were a little bit. It wasn't so round, you know. Uh, we were young and very ambitious, all of us, and. It was my way or the highway, and yeah, like this always. So, so instead of uh, working it out, it was like, yeah, fuck you, Dave, fuck you. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that. Uh, we, it's, we never, it, 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 it never uh, like hit the fan. Uh, it really didn't. But uh, um, yeah, they wanted to go on tour, and they they had Wintersorg, uh, which was perfect. Uh, and um and yeah so that's that chapter happened and then i mean for me it was dimmu Borgir was a lot of work that uh yeah. those years too so. yeah and i loved him loved your work in dimmu it's like the, the best in my opinion like like i like the earlier albums but before you joined but i feel like when you joined it, i feel like you took the band to a whole new level i think uh, it was a very good uh, it's, uh, with all the strong individuals in the bands, and I mean, they had 
uh, the uh, Intro and Darkness Triumphant album was a fantastic album um, as well. Yeah. And um, uh, Scott said, hey, Vin, Mr. Parta, and even Snagash uh, was in and out of the band, and he was a fantastic musician, uh, still is, and with the with Jamie uh, there too. I mean, there were so many cooks uh, and just and so working so yeah, inspired. Everybody was super inspired, and that was inspiring for us all. And so we just yeah, it was a good time. I think uh, it's. Uh, and it shows. Okay. Then moving on, we have uh, Death Cult Armageddon. Just another another great, one of my favorite Dimu albums, like Progenies of the Great Apocalypse, Lips, Blood Hunger Doctrine. And it's just a, it's just a sick album. Great follow-up to Puritanical Euphoric Misanthropia. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, yeah, and it was also there? yeah, yeah. I'm still here, here, and I believe you also had a slight. You had a different drummer, drummer on here. You got the great Nick Barker who played with Cradle of Phil, Filth. How is it like jamming with him as part of like the rhythm section? Uh, it's, it's Nick uh, Nicholas Barker started out on the uh, on the album before. Oh Death yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I for, almost forgot about that duel. <laughs> <clears throat> Nicholas Barker, yeah, oh, boy. He's, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Shudan was a great drummer too, and uh, it's, uh, nobody should underrate him as a drummer. Uh, Nicholas Barker is uh, once in a generation kind of drummer, uh, and his dedication to to Dimmu Borgir was just amazing. He went in and uh, had total control over everything he did, and uh, yeah. Um, it was, um, yeah, amazing times. And what he did is just unbelievable to this date, in my opinion. Yeah, and what was the touring like for Death Cold? Because I know you did, like, OzFest back in 04. Yeah, it's, yeah, there was a lot of, a lot of work. And that was, uh, maybe it's, yeah, I was dimmy peaking with the, I mean, the opening of, there was, it was Black Sabbath. Yeah, the uh, OGs of metal. Yeah. Yeah, the fuck Slayer and I mean and, Gosh, and we were lining up for the guys. It was uh yeah, it was kind of unbelievable. Um having uh, you know Black Sabbath come into our dressing room and asking us for a autograph. My jaw fucking jumped to the ground and so I now I have I have their autograph, of course. Uh, that's it. That's wow, that's precious. awesome. Hey. It's so fucking awesome. Can't believe it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like you should. Like I thought it would be like the other way, but like the legends asking for your autograph. Wow. I mean, that's so fucking sweet of them. I mean, it's, it's that's so cool. Uh, it it means so much for for up and coming bands. I'm sure they know this, and so it was a, so humble and extremely cool uh, thing of them to do. And uh, it's, as you asked me to, uh, in the beginning too, I mean, who's your your uh, your influences. Ozzy Osbourne is my main influence. That's uh, that's for sure. When it comes to, to vocals, I was uh, always uh, singing as uh, after Tim and yeah, doing uh, second melody lines and on top of his. And I thought it sounded so cool. And it was just I could do that for for hours and hours. Right. Yes, I still do. <laughs> 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 All right, and then in between uh, Death Cold Armageddon and Sorte Diable, you started Arcturus. How did, did Arcturus form? Oh, I did definitely didn't start that. Uh, what do you mean? Which year? Like it was like 2005, you dropped the debut album, Sideshow Symphonies. Oh, no, that's definitely not the debut album, sir. Uh, uh, Arcturus is... Uh, I heard... Arturus for the first time sipping chocolate milk with my good friend Einar. He got the, oh. the huge tape trader. He got the, the, the Morax and My Angel album. Uh, this must have been fucking 91? 92? Oh. I can't remember. Oh, wow. I, 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 little did I know. 
Yeah, they've been around for some, for some years. Uh, 31 years now, actually. Wow. Yes. Yeah, we were just supposed to do the great 31st anniversary tour. Uh, and yeah, it got cancelled because of COVID, as everything else. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, but yeah, 2005 was... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was your first album with the band. No, I had been slightly in there with the with the uh, uh, La Masquerade, which was in that came in '96. Ah. Yes, yes, right. so much. I mean, it's, it's um, you know, uh, Norwegian musicians they slap around in each other's bands all the time. That's so where I can see how it's it's confusing. It's in and out. Yeah, yeah it confused me for a sec. I was like, what? <laughs> and then I looked. I was like, oh, so they've been yeah. around for a while. <laughs> yeah. So, so moving on. Yeah, we, yeah you're uh, saying. What am I saying? Well, <clears throat> uh, it's. I mean, it's, uh, Garm uh, as in Bark. Like, I was uh, the vocalist. Uh, uh, main vocalist before before me. He quit in the, uh, in the early two thousands after the Shamirs album. I can't remember why, but he did, and uh, so they asked me if I could do it, and I said no because, oh, uh, can I really just, yeah, it's it's getting a pattern here. He quits, and I I join, so I said no. But then I heard the mater material, and then I said yes because the material was fantastic. Even well, I thought so anyway, and so I made a bunch of lyrics, and we did the album, and um, unfortunately, I. That's uh, no real. Uh, I didn't have enough time to do the vocals, so that was just smush right in. Uh, one, uh, yeah, and so it is what it is. But um, the material is at least good, and the lyrics. Yeah, it's too. kick ass. <laughs> oh, I miss America. Oh, uh, hey yeah. man, dude. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> all right and then then moving on you got your last album with Demi Borgir in Sorte Diable which in un, my unpopular opinion this is like my favorite Demi album like I remember first hearing like the sacrilegious scorn and that's honestly my first taste of hearing Demi and then I discovered all the other stuff uh, this was this is still totally a great works. album but what was it like making this this album uh that was the beginning of the end for for me so that w that was a very difficult uh album in the studio i mean we worked there was yeah it wasn't <sighs> how can i say this it's um no it was um it was difficult uh, um that's all i have to say about that but uh yeah i mean hellhammer was there and uh, it's obviously that was uh He's, uh, he's just, what can I say? I, um, he's, he's, <laughs> he's fantastic. Yes, he really is. And I can't believe that, uh, you know, he's there in uh, Arturis and uh, that I'm able to play uh, to play with him even today. So it's, uh, it's a fucking honor. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And I think Dimu did a shame by, by, by letting, letting you go. Because go because it was like your voice on that album is just pure epicness well thank you uh i'm sure <laughs> sure i'm sure they find them every day i mean there was we had been together for 10 years uh, uh and it was just the, the usual um the usual bullshit and uh, everybody was been in the band uh, and in their 20s for so long and gotten to a, a certain stage i mean there's there's uh it's it's getting difficult when when there's money and politics and labels and everything mixed and you work all day and there's a lot of alcohol and other things and yeah it is what it is so um i'm happy you got to do as much as we did uh with yeah right. with the guys that were there so that's just um it's water under the bridge, and it's um, I'm really proud and, and happy uh, of that area. And that, 
Yeah, then in yeah. the next up in 2011 you released a solo album called Stormseeker, which nobody really talks about this album. Like what what was the idea to to be like I want to do a solo album? <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, so that's um who doesn't want to do a solo album? Come on. It's yeah. uh, it's fun. Um, yeah, it's totally different compared to like Borknagar and Dimu in a way. And Arcturus. Yeah, totally. Yes, yes, it is, and uh, and yeah, I have a bunch of other songs, so uh, we'll see. Maybe there will be a number two. But um, yeah, I was gonna ask like if you would ever make another solo album since it's been over a decade. Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't. I'm just here in my studio. I I make songs when I feel like it, and uh, and and there's no pressure, and I do it for me and um i mean i could probably get a solo album together if i got like a lot of money from a label or something and um but yeah fuck it it's um uh, i'm just having fun with music here and having fun is just maybe not the right word coming from the black metal background i'm sorry, <laughs> sorry <laughs> that... <laughs> that's good man um, yeah buddy yeah yeah well yeah, yeah. it is what it is yeah, but I think it was also around the time you rejoined Borknagar. What made you decide to come back? Uh, well, we did... Uh, I can't remember which album that was. Um, the Universal album, maybe. It was... Uh, with Istan phoned me up and said, do you want to do one song? Because um, we're recording this uh, song called My Domain, and uh, I would really like you to, to sing on it. I think I've, we had that uh, riff back in the day when our way split too. But um, so anyway, yeah, we did, we did that. So I went into the studio and it was it just felt really good uh, doing Bertar again. And um, and so we decided to yeah, just jam a little more maybe on the on the next album, which was Urd probably. Which we did. Yeah, no, uh, um, it's a great, great album, Bird. Uh, yeah, I like that one. It's fucking even growing on me. I, yeah, it's 10 and, years uh, old this year. Oh, shit. Wow. Yeah, wow. Do, you, yeah wow. do you have a different perspective about it now as opposed to when you first put it out? I like it even more. Uh, 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 I mean, the, the bass player quit, and so it's just felt natural that I should get back on bass and and Andreas was still there and that's what I really love about that album that uh, there's uh, split vocal duties between me and, and him and I mean I'm a huge fan of his vocals so uh, so that's one of my favorite uh, albums uh, of Berta actually maybe just because of that uh, I just love the material it's uh, it was. It, it, we didn't tour it. it. Was it just? It just passed by, and it's, it's an, such an underrated album, I think, in my opinion. Anyway, um, yeah, I just love that album. <sighs> and then moving on, you we got. But you went back with the studio with Arcturus and released uh, Arctur Turian, which came out in 2015. Like a little over a decade since Saito Symphony Seas. What was that like? Re making a new album with them after after 10 years. Oh, uh, much more fun in the studio. I mean, this time, uh, I uh, we did it, we recorded everything at uh, at Merla Studios, which is the private studio of the guitar player Knut. Uh, Knut Merla, and um, yeah, yeah, we we just it was so fun. It, it was uh, I'm saying fun again. It's not allowed. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, a great time in the studio. We were just I was drinking a lot and just singing and fucking up and then doing takes again and it was just yeah, sweet. Um, yeah, yes, it really was. Yeah, and that's all I had to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and then moving on to you went the 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 last two things we're talking about is of course Winter Thrice by. Borknagar or love this album like like did you feel like comfortable 
well with this album with or to, to earn did you feel more like it's hard to describe it but like like it but it's just a great album I think so too. I mean, I was very much involved with the the art tours had kind of priority uh, at at that time for, uh, for me. So I I felt I kind of ne neglected that album a bit. Um, but yeah, it's a great album and Winter Sorg and and especially Garm too. I mean, his vocals on Winter Winter Tries is fucking phenomenal. <laughs> phenomenal. Oh, I can't say that word. Try. Yeah. Can you say it for me? Phenomenal. phenomenal? Damn. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Arr. <laughs> yes, Almost sounded pirate. Arr, matey. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, yes. And um, yeah. So that's, yeah, that's a good album. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it definitely has like that feeling of like cold and wintry. Indeed. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. And it's like, like you've all been involved with like so many bands like Mortnagar or Arturis. Do you have like a different like like mind frame depending on the projects that you're in, or is there like a method to, to madness that applies to everything? I think well, it's just riffs. Everything uh, it's down to the riff. It's uh, what the riff makes you feel, and and you take it from there. Um, of course, Mortnagar has this extend frame around it, and um, and uh, sort of these different aspects of what's uh yeah what you draw inspiration from i guess uh compared to to Arturus, which is more uh it's wilder in a way I don't know. yeah yeah listen here and um, yeah there you go it's all about the riffs sir it's a that's great and the last thing is True North, their, their most recent, the recent Borknagar album. Like, was that was that like following up Winter Thrice? Because I feel like it's almost kind of like similar. It both has like kind of like that wintry -y goodness. It's almost, I feel like it's could be almost kind of like a sequel in a way. Yeah, and I think there will be more of that. Uh, I think Borknagar has pretty much uh, found, found, the, um, found its way, I guess. So uh, it's just polishing, making it even better. It's just making riffs that you know make you feel uh, something and um, and uh, yeah more of, the, more of the same that sounds not very uh, challenging but it is kind of uh, and I believe you also did harsh vocals for the first time as well yeah. yeah for the first time in a long time uh, so yeah, I mean, were you like nervous at all <laughs> that's a very good question uh no uh it's, uh, it's, i mean it's, i did some uh some grim vocals um, on the 2005 or at least i tried but i thought uh it didn't work really that was on uh oh fuck the second song what's that called frontier blah 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 pioneer something something a lot uh she breaks here we go uh I don't know why, but I thought I'd lost lost my grim grim vocals, but maybe you know, I, I'm smoking uh, a lot of cigarettes again, and maybe that helps. So I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, yeah, then that's just uh, you have to get into it, and um, there's um, there's uh, some good ways to do that in the studio. Uh, no, that was just again. That word which is not allowed yeah yeah and as a vocalist do you need to like hear music in order to come up with lyrics or do you usually have like a lyrical concept in mind and that can help determine the composition of the music itself Ooh, uh i like to uh, to hear it to get the music done first um uh, because then it's uh and gets the mood out of uh, of the song and then find a topic and then maybe it's or it's, yeah i have the, all the melody lines i have all the music uh, i can sing like yeah uh, i mean uh, my mother is uh what is it that's two of us witness but something religious they talk in tongues and shit and i do this <laughs> i i can do this on uh, i can just sing squirrel daryl uh it's on uh, on uh, on some uh, on some riffs and 
then I will get the feel out of it. And then when I listen back on it, I will get a topic and then write it from there. And mm -hmm. fit the words into the phrasing that I does because I think this way it will, I don't know, it sounds more spontaneous. I like that. Right, right. It would be great. Yeah, it would I suck to have. You know what you're saying. Yeah. It, yeah, it would suck to have like the best uh, set of lyrics and they would go like one syllable like over the arrangement. <laughs> that's that's fine too. I mean, it's, uh, it's, there's there shouldn't be any rules to this. I mean, it's uh, and but that's that's my that's how I usually do it. And every other way is fine too. It's just uh, it's just the way I like to work. Right. And, and and I mean, if, it, if if you have the syllables going out and it's it doesn't um, maybe sound right to you at first, maybe that's even better because then it will be unexpected and unexpected is always good. So there's no rules. Yeah. That's do you sure? Yeah. Do you tend to leave your lyrics open to interpretation, or do you try to engage the listener into what the songs are about? I I have my in the my very clear. Uh, I know what they're about. Uh, for me, uh, and then I would, I don't like to go and say, oh, this is how it is, uh, because people interpret different, they always do. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's, that's, that's beautiful. So, you know, it is what it is. All right. And as a ba bass player, because I always think the bass is as an as a emphasis on not just rhythm, but melody too. So do you usually have like a bass pattern or written? written and the band can write over that or do you need to hear what the guitars and the drums are doing in order to come up with a bass line i am a lazy fuck when it comes to bass i it's, uh, it's the last albums I, I i just um i go in the studio and then do the bass after everything else is done pretty much and that's uh, <laughs> maybe not the right way but it kind of works uh it's uh yeah i do it I just I just do it and in a in a Giz Butler kind of sloppy way and, and that's that's fine with me. That's 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 just the way I do it. Yeah, and you're also singing and playing bass. So do you usually have to like figure out like like where you're like playing and then where this the vocals are coming? No, never. <clears throat> I don't uh, I don't think about uh, one or the other. It's it's uh, all about the music and uh and then, then I can maybe I'd, I will regret it afterwards if I do like a super complicated bass line in the, when I'm doing vocals at the same time. But uh, I can figure that one out later. But um, yeah, that's just separated. No, no thoughts at all to what would be easier live or more. I don't know. Mm, yeah, I don't know. That's just the way I do it. All right. Anyway, I got two more questions for you. Yeah, you ready for the hardest question of all? <laughs> yes. Of course. How do you, how do you know when a song is done? You never. Oh. You never. That's uh, that's uh, that's just uh, the way it is. It's it's never done in the it's in the music um, You can always do it better, and that's why it's, we keep on making songs, I guess. And and the final question I want to ask is coming from Norway, which is I pretty much people would say that Norway is like the black metal capital with like bands like Emperor, May Mayhem, Dark Throne, like so many great bands from that scene. But I also think that Borknagar is kind of like rebels against like all the black metal bands like try to do like the opposite. So is there like a scene in Norway that you felt a part of or was it for your goal to like get outside of like your country and just play in front of like different countries, different audiences and stuff? Uh I think this. Oh man, the scene in Bergen and the scene in Bergen and the scene in in Oslo was kind of uh, same but different. It was different back in the day. Like in yeah, that's you can write a book about that stuff. Uh, I don't know. It's, I never felt that, but no, it was really uh, like in uh, in in clash or in opposite or in conflict with the scene it was i mean Pakistan has always been a loner i guess you can say so he's been doing his own thing and he doesn't give a fuck about anything else 
Uh, it's I've been up and about, um, uh, yeah, in different bands. That suits me fine. Um, we're different. All right. Uh, there's, there's no, there's no, no big, I don't know, universal thing about that. It's just this. Okay. <laughs> So uh, before we go, I just want to thank you so much for this interview. Is there just anything else with uh, Borknagar that you like to promote in terms of like new music? And I know I'm I'm stoked to see you in the Devastation of the Nation toward this this spring. I'm already looking to see you all in the Birmingham, Alabama date and the Atlanta, Georgia date. Just that lineup so goddamn good. I have to see it more than once. Sweet, fantastic. Thank you so much uh, for saying that. Me, uh, that's kind of why I did this interview because uh, I want uh, as many. Uh, it's possible to know that we're coming to the United States again. It's been a very long time since we did a proper tour. Um, we, uh, <laughs> yeah, very long time. So I hope uh, all the uh, you know old school uh, bastards will get their fat American asses out of the sofa and come to a show. And uh, yeah, it would be nice to see some of my friends again. And uh, yeah. Just uh, looking forward to play the states again, and uh, and uh, yeah, with everything that uh, involves and um, yeah, the people, and I just miss the language and you know. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Carl. Yeah. Thanks, Carl. Yeah. Yoda, bare hygge. Take a Nice talking to you, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. So everybody, ICS Vortex. We'll see you next time. Yes, sir.